In this lesson, we'll learn how to create vignetting, which is one of the first aberrations that happen when light is first entering our camera. Okay, so I want to start out here with just some images that describe the way that vignetting happens. So this bar that you see here is representing light entering the camera. So if light is going just straight into the camera right from the middle here, it's going to enter pretty much unimpeded. But that's not really how light works when it goes into a camera. It comes in from all different directions, pretty much as far open as you have um, this lens opening here at the end. So in my next image here, you'll see light coming in from the side, which it's really going to be coming in from the side and from the middle, really just all at the same time, just depending on how well lit your shot is. Now, if you have a camera that has a really extreme outer hood, like what you see right here, you're going to end up with probably a little bit, bit of vignetting around those edges. So there's a couple kinds of vignetting that can occur. You can have a mechanical vignette that's going to completely block the light and looks almost like you're looking through a tube, or you can, or you can have a natural or optical vignette that's very soft and diffused. And it really should be so subtle that you can't really see the difference unless you turn it off and off, uh, off and on really quickly. So I want to show you an image that has some vignetting in it. And this is actually a pretty strong vignette, and I have it like that just so that you can really see that graduation there. But part of what is great about this shot is that it's a very wide angle, so you're able to see quite a lot of the image based on where the camera is when it, this image was taken. And a lot of times with a really wide angle lens, you're going to get more vignetting just because of the nature of the way that light enters through a lens like that. So it's really just being caused by uh, natural light fall off on the edge of those wide angle lenses simply because of their shape. So let's go ahead and go into After Effects and start creating some vignettes. Okay, so I've got just this image here that we're going to be working on working with for most of our course and I just have this piece of footage kind of dropped in here and you can see that it is an animated video of this plane kind of flying and taking off from the platform so what we're going to be doing with this, first of all, is adding our vignette. So a really easy way to add a vignette on top of this is simply to use a solid. Now I want to go ahead and grab my footage and put it into a pre-comp just in case I want to maybe change anything with that footage later on or maybe drop something else at the root of this container because really anything besides the lens flares that we'll be talking about later which require specific tracking data from your um, really from your places that you have lights in your shot everything else pretty much should be able to transfer from one image to the other because what's causing it is the camera and not really the image itself so it's good to go ahead and pre-compose this so just grab your footage we'll hit Control shift c to bring up our pre-comp and we'll just call this footage and I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to move all attributes into the new composition. Go ahead and say okay. And now I'm ready to create my vignette on top of this. So I'm just gonna come up here, go to layer, new, solid, and I'm just gonna choose a pretty dark black, just kinda down there. Um, maybe not the very blackest black that's possible, but pretty dark. Go ahead and say okay to that. And then I'm gonna go up here to my shape tools and we'll grab our ellipse tool. And you can just start up here in the upper left hand corner and begin drawing that shape. Now you can either invert the shape or add it, or, or excuse me, change the add to subtract to get this black to now be on the outside instead of the inside. So I'll go ahead and just check inverted. Now the look that we have right now 
is the look of a mechanical vignette. So this is usually something that would happen really because of some kind of a failure in your camera. Um, maybe you have something really big on the end of your camera that's blocking the light from going in and really that's the only time this is going to happen. A lens is never really going to cause some look like this to occur. But to get those nice natural optical looking vignettes, you can just come into that mask and we'll turn up the feather and you kind of instantly get more of that look like what I showed you in the picture that we were looking at earlier. Now, right now, this is still way too strong for my liking. So I'm going to go ahead and expand my mask a bit just to push that farther out to the edges. And then I'll crank up the feathering just a little bit more to make it even more subtle. And usually I just kind of work between expanding the mask and feathering the mask until I find something that I'm happy with. Now, if you're only going to be adding one or two lens effects, it's okay to maybe make it a little more obvious at first. Um, but if you add all of the lens effects that we're going to be looking at today, having too extreme of any one of those effects, once they're compounded on each other by the end of the course, your image is going to be pretty distorted. So it's really good to have this scaled back quite a lot and not have a really harsh vignette. And even now, this vignette to me is still a little bit visible just right here. And if I toggle the eyeball on and off, you can see a pretty big difference between the, having the vignette and not having it. So I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit on that as well. Just got that at about 73% now. And that's helping to scale that back quite a bit. And you can continue to do this until you feel like the vignette is subtle enough for your taste. Now, something else that you can do to make your vignette feel a little bit more realistic is to um, have a second vignette, which is also going to be equally subtle, but with slightly different proportions. So an easy way to do that is simply to grab that um, black solid that we created earlier, hit control D to duplicate it, and then we'll just come in here and grab the edges of the mask and move them a little bit. So this is going to mimic the effect that there are more than one um, or that there is more than one glass element inside of the lens part of your camera. So it's causing a slightly different vignetting just based on how those are interacting together. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that mask and its options. And earlier, whenever we had the mask opacity at 40% for one mask, that seemed Okay, but now with those two combined, it's as if we had one mask that is a lot darker. So I'm going to turn these down even more, maybe this one to 15 and this one to something like 20. So now I have two masks on top of each other on top of those two different solids and that's given me two different variations on that vignette. And again, very, very subtle. Um, almost looks no different. You really wouldn't be able to tell the, a difference unless I was toggling that on and off. But that's what makes this um, feel more real in the end is that we are doing it in a way that is subtle and not a way that is overwhelming our image and making you say, oh, that has a vignette on it. So unless you're going for a really kind of stylized look, maybe like you see with some motion graphics where you have a background that looks very vignetted, um, that's okay to have a vignette like that in those situations. It's purposeful. But in this situation, we're going for something that looks photorealistic. So it's not going to help you to overdo your vignette.